Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this morning, our, I'm going to read a text. And our text this morning comes from Luke chapter 8. Verses 4 through 15. And this will be the basis of the message this morning. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The title is called, Help, I Need to Change My Soil. Help, I Need to Change My Soil. So we've heard quite a bit this morning in respect to Pastor Kofi encouraging us to come during the week. And I have to say, for the past eight weeks, every Wednesday night, we've been here. And it is sad. Like, I want to be straightforward. It is sad that it's only five or seven people on a Wednesday night. We are asking you, please, if your schedule will allow, if you're not working, please come out. It's important. If we continue like this, there won't be another Wednesday night service. We'll have to scrap it. That's, we need to speak the truth. We're asking you, please, make an honest effort to be here. You need to be here if you can. We're not putting any pressure on you. We're just saying, rearrange your schedule and be here to support the services on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Friday. Amen? Amen. This is straight talk. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now let's look at Luke 8, 4 through 15. And I'm reading from the message version. As they went, and this is talking about Jesus, in the previous chapter, which is chapter 7, there were quite a bit of things that were happening. Jesus healed the centurion servant. John sent some of his disciples to find out from Jesus how come he's not performing, he's not acting the way John thought he should have acted. Following that, Jesus spoke to a group of women. So Jesus had a group of women that is traveling around with him. And this is where we picked up. As they went from town to town, a lot of people joined in and traveled along. He addressed them using parables. He said, a farmer went out to sow his seed. Some of it fell on the road. It was trapped down and the birds ate it. Other seed fell in the rocks. It spouted, but withered because it didn't have good roots. Other seed fell in the thorn. The thorn grew with it and strangled it. Other seed fell in rich soil and produced a bumper crop. Then Jesus said, are you listening to this? Really listening? His disciples, his disciples asked, sorry, my mouth is dry. His disciples asked, why did you tell the story? He said, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. There are others who need stories. But even with stories, sorry, some of them, he said, but even with stories, some of them aren't going to get it. Their eyes are opened, but don't see a thing. Their ears are opened, but don't hear a thing. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God. The seeds on the road are those who hear the word. But no sooner do they hear it, then the devil snatches it from them. So they won't believe and be saved. The seeds in the rocks are those 
who hear with enthusiasm. But the enthusiasm doesn't go very long or very deep. It's only another fad. And the moment there's trouble, it's gone. And the seed that fell in the thorns, well, these are the ones who hear. But then the seed is crowded out. And nothing comes of it. As they go about their lives, worrying about tomorrow, making money, and having fun. Verse 15. But the seed in the good soil, these are the good hearts who seize the word and hold on. No matter what, stick in with it until there's a harvest. Praise God. Thanks be to the reading of his holy word. I now pass it over to Pastor Phil. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank God for everything. I want to thank all the people that were at our graduation last week. At that church that we were at, I, uh, I preached there around two, two and a half, three years ago. And uh, there were some Trinidadians who were there. There were some Jamaicans who were there. And uh, they were just whooping it up. They were boisterous. And uh, they didn't call me back. <laughs> so last Sunday, while we were there, I mean, Bishop Michelle, I know, she's very boisterous. Pastor Carl, I know. Pastor JB. Sister Claudia, you know that these people are quiet people. I was surprised to hear their, you know, to hear them shouting like that. They were boisterous. <laughs> the entire church was boisterous. And if I had a few people two, two and a half years ago there, and they only accept me last Sunday, when do you think I'll be going back to that place <laughs> after all that noise? <laughs> do you think that they're going to tell me, they're going to tell me, hey, in 20 years time, you can come back. <laughs> but I thank God for your support. Amen. And I just want to big up my yard is respect, <laughs> respect, my yard is all over, yeah man, yeah man. Respect. Yes, so we haven't got much time, so I'm just going to get into the word. A story that I have known, I've heard about from Pastor Robbie Zachariah. This young pastor went to a church that had been split apart in so many ways but especially by a loose tongue that had been allowed. The church is pretty well reduced to a bare survival because people just keep leaving because of the loose tongue. This young pastor arrived and decided to open his Bible and just preach the truth. Slowly but surely the church began to grow and not long before it was in a growth spurt. Finally, it was bulging at the seams, and they went to multiple services. It was obvious that they need a larger building. The project cost $1 million, and they didn't have a lot of money to build a new facility, but it so happened that in this church were two brothers, and they were filthy rich. One brother died, and the surviving brother came to the pastor in his study. He said, here, I have something for you. A $1 million check for the building. So when you preach at my brother's funeral, all I ask you to do is tell the people that he was a saint. That's all I ask for. 
The pastor thought for a moment. Then he said, yes, I'll do it. So he deposited the check into the church account. The funeral came in about four or five days. The pastor stood up at the funeral service of the brother and began to address the subject of the man who had died. He said, this man was a reprobate. <laughs> he was unfaithful to his family. He was dishonest in his business and was not a man that you could trust. He was a part of the reason why this church did not get off the ground. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. <laughs> There are many ways a pastor can tell the truth. Amen? Amen. This morning, I will share with you some truths about in the book of Luke. As my wife read from Luke 8, it tells of a story. It tells of a story of a, a sower. A farmer, his bag, you know, is on his back and he's going through sowing seeds all over the place because he wants his crop to look good because, hey, Farmer Jones is over there doing his stuff. I got to do my stuff too. And so the soil that they spoke about in Luke or what Jesus spoke about, the parable with the farmer when after he scattered all the seeds some went on the wayside so let's take it down the first seed went to the wayside and it was packed down, you know, people trampling all along. And then the birds came in, saw that, hey, there's food there. And so they called their buddies over, and they had a feast. So those were the exposed seeds. The second soil, I would say that's the rocky soil. <coughs> and these seeds fall between the rocks, and then there's, you know, some earth there also. And the seed fell in, and, you know, rain or water comes, and it starts sprouting. But only thing is that uh, when the sun comes up, it withers. The third soil fell among thorns. These are the thistles that when it goes through, you know, when, when you plant it, then the dandelions come and overrun it. You know those dandelions, they're dangerous. Yeah, so the thorns and all these things, and uh, it chokes it. Then some fell on the good soil. And there was a bumper crop at the end of the season. Bumper crop. So, let's get into the gist of the story. Let's get into the gist of it. If you can project for me Luke 8, verse 12. Help, I need to change my soil. That is my topic today. And I guess some of us may need to change our soil. But can you project for me Luke 8, verse 12. Verse 12. Okay. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. This is what happened. Have you ever been to the mall on a busy day? There's this store advertising, that store advertising, that store advertising, that store, everyone is advertising. But yes, you see it, you see it, and you go your way. 
This is what he's talking about. Jesus is talking about the seed that's on the wayside. This seed does not gather anything. The birds come when you get the word, when you're in church and you get the word of God into you. Huh, so what? You walk away. You don't listen. This is what uh, it's talking about. Those on the wayside. Those on the wayside that doesn't care about anything. So what if it's the religion? So what? I'm on my way. This has nothing to do with me. If we were to listen to what the scripture teaches, believe it, and then act upon it, we would be saved. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Remember what my wife said earlier? Yeah. You talk to me, I talk to you. Yes. Uh, yes. If you don't talk to me, well, don't talk to me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But if we just go away without hearing the word, when the word is preached, Sunday after Sunday, day after day, you're going to come out to nothing. Nothing. Now, let's look at uh, 13, verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no roots who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Notice that this soil initially receives the word with joy. It did receive the word with joy. It did. This second soil hears the word and says, yes, this is what I've been looking for. These are the instructions I need. This is helpful advice. I love it. I love it. And then they begin to do what God's word says because of the rocks in their lives. The rocks. Now, that seed went into the soil. The soil was with the rocks. And what happened? The rain comes. Start growing. Yes, I'm alive. I'm al and then the sun comes in. It's dead. Mm. What are the rocks in your lives today? What are the rocks in your life today? First John 2.16 says, The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. Yes. Pastor JB, can I be blunt? Okay. What are your rocks? Do you think that uh, after you hear the word of God being preached, the apostle comes up and he preaches about the word of God? Pastor JB comes up, he preaches about the word of God. Do you think that these men of God takes it like, you know, it's a light thing to do? To be preaching? They have other things to do. But because of what God gave them in their hearts yeah. Yeah. to produce the word. It's not their words. It's not their words. The Bible says about sexual immorality, but I'm going to say, stop having sex outside of marriage. It is not your territory. It is not your thing to do. Stop going to the bars and picking up whosoever, whatsoever, whensoever, whysoever, wheresoever. It is not your thing to do. If you want to make it into the kingdom of God, you do what you got to do. You stop doing these things which are immoral. 
if you want to be my friend, tough. If you don't want to be my friend, even tougher. <laughs> Stop doing these things. Sex is for a married couple. Sex is for married couple, so stop. Amen? Talk to me. Talk to me. Help! I need to change my soil. Talk to me. And if you don't like me again, I can call on Pastor Kofi, he can arrest me. Because you don't like me, I'm going to kill you with love. I'm going to kill you with prayer. So, Pastor Kofi, when you're ready. Amen? Amen. Don't go to bars. Okay, tell you what happened to me. I'm going to give you something here. I remember back home, I went to a bar. Okay, my son doesn't know that, uh, you know, he's going to say, oh, dad. But uh, I went to this bar and, uh, you know, I'm there, the music is playing, and I'm there tapping my finger, you know, yes, because I, have, I was so filled with the Holy Spirit. I start tapping my finger, and then I realize, oh, my finger's tapping, then I st held on to it, <laughs> then my foot starts moving. I said, no, no, no. I left because all my dogs were there. I mean, my friends were there. Okay, they're all there. And you know what, at the workplace, we had over 2,000 employees. I didn't know that they saw me. They start saying, oh, Phil was doing this and that and so on. It ruined my testimony for Jesus. How can I go back to these people and tell them about Christ? Stop going to bars. Stop go picking up strangers. Yes. You need happy hour? Look to your Bible. Yes. Go to church. Yes. And I love you. Yes, yeah. yeah, sexual pressure is a big rock. So is alcohol, so is drugs. These guys that keep talking uh, foolish nonsense in your, in your ears, forget it. Jesus is the only way. He is the only way. Amen. Sin is serious. Yes, on the cross, Jesus paid it all for us. Amen. Christ, in Christ we are secured. But it doesn't mean we should go sin all the time. Amen. What can we do to get out of this? First, let's pray. We must pray. Pray that you will not yield to temptation. Because temptation is not a sin. But if you go into temptation, the same thing over and over and over, what it's doing, it's weakening your defense system. And when it weakens your defense system, then you're, the go, you're gonna go and sin. You think that with alcohol, yes, I'm gonna be smelling it now, smelling it tomorrow, then you're gonna taste it the following day, and then what happened? Where's your testimony? We are Christians, we are men and women of God who stand upon his word. Amen? We should stand up on his word and never compromise. Amen. Amen. Second, don't put yourself in temptious situations. Third, when you face temptation, look the other way. I guess most of you know Usain Bolt, right? World's fastest runner. Well, when temptation comes your way, you run faster than him out of it because Jesus, <laughs> Jesus didn't argue with the devil. He didn't argue with the devil. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Fourth, spend more time. Spend more time with Christians. Spend more time in the word. You need more time to be with God. 
You need, you need more time to sit at his feet Amen. and absorb his words. That's when we say, help, I need to change my soil. Help, Lord, I need to change my soil. Because, Lord, if I sit at your feet, I will change my soil. Yes. If I sit with Christians, right. I'll change my soil. Help, Lord, help. He's there. He's there ready and waiting. Now let's look at the third one. The third one is more dangerous than the, than the previous two. Why? Why is it so dangerous? Why? Why? Third one, the thorns. The thorns of life. Why is it so dangerous? In Luke 8, 14, it says, Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked by cares, riches, pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. No fruit to maturity. So why is the thorn so dangerous? I'll let you know why it's so dangerous. Because it's the cares of the world. You walk like a Christian. You talk like a Christian. You eat like a Christian. You sleep like a Christian. Do everything like a Christian. But the cares of the world put you down on your back because you don't realize what's taking place in your lives. That's the cares of the world. It happened to me. But I thank God that I have my wife who can take, put me back uh, into the straight and narrow. I got a group of people that I meet with on a Thursday night. They put me back in the straight and narrow because we're there for each other in confidentiality. We talk about what's taking place in the world, what's taking place in our lives. And you know what? They take us and say, listen, listen. You're talking up too much about too much cares. Put that aside. Put Jesus in. He'll take care of that because I got to cast all my cares upon him. Yes. That is the Christ that I serve. But it's tough. It's tough. My kids, you know, when, when, I, when, my, when my son was younger, I have to take him to hockey here, hockey there, all over the place. Hockey, 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 hockey. <laughs> But let me tell you something. Sometimes when the cares come in, because these people, they, they are Christians. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. For me to witness to these people, it's very difficult. Because they can wrap me around their little finger. I mean, my little finger. They can wrap me around because they know the Bible. And they'll tell you that they're a Christian. They'll tell you that they preached. They'll tell you that they teach. They have a Sunday school class. They have, a, they have classes all over. They're big in the hierarchy of, 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 of where the gospel is. It's difficult to get through to them. Very difficult. But there's hope. There are some Christians who act like Christians, talk like Christians, and even behave like Christians. They don't have any serious evident patterns of sin in their lives. But these true and genuine Christians are so busy with life that they have very little time for the things of God. And they do have time for the things of God, but they're so busy. The things we spend our time on are not sinful, but we feel they are not harming us. Not arming us, but because the subtleness of the devil, the cares of the world comes in and start intertwined with you, with us, and so on, and then without you know, then you don't realize what's taking place. That's when we say, if you figure it out, that's when we say, Lord, help. I need to change my soil. Lord, help. I need to change my soil. To change my soil. 
Don't think you can produce fruit on Sunday alone. Don't think you can produce fruit on one night alone. You need your spiritual meal. You need the intercessor prayer group on a Tuesday. You need Wednesday, like what Pastor Kofi said, the dissection by Sister Juliet of the gospel, of the word. On a Friday night, you'll be here for Frontline. You need all these nourishment. You need to get out and get within the realms of Christ, of his word. And then we say, Lord, help. I need to change my soil. We need to be in the middle where the tree is. So I go to my fourth point, Luke 8, 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. The fourth soil is what God wants all of us to become. Lord, help me to change. Because I'm going to change. I have to change my soil. Because every, all three of them, sometimes, that, that, that's me. That's me. All three soils, that's me. Sometimes I hear the word and I... Sometimes the cares of the world... I need this good soil. But none of us can become this good soil unless we're going to work for it. Because it comes, it does not come automatically or instantly. It takes hard work and patience. Hard work and patience. What does hard work and patience mean? Hard work, patience. Hard work, patience. Pray, 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 pray. Talk to people about God. Read his word. Hard work, hard work, hard work. Pray, my knees are hurting. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, Lord, help me. I need to change my soil. Because it's hard work. After a while, this hard work becomes easy work. It becomes a part of you. You can ask the prophetess there. You can ask any man and woman of God who stands, who kneels, who lie down, and everything like that. And after a while, it becomes a part of their lives. Because they seek the good soil. They seek the good soil. Help. I need to change my soil. Help. 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 Help, Lord. Help. Help. We need to change our soil. Help, Lord. Lord. Help. 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 We need to change our soil. We need to change our soil. Why do you think so many of us have so many problems? Why do you think so many of you have to go up in the back room there and speak to Pastor JB? Why? Why? Help. I need to change my soil. Help. Help, Lord. Help. We all need to change our soil. Amen. Jesus, help us. We need to change, Lord. We're weak. We're weak, Lord. Sometimes we hear the word and we walk by. Lord, help. I need to change my soil. Lord, the thorns of life 
is weighing me down. Instead of reading, I'm doing something else. Your word, Lord, I'm doing something else. Lord, help. My Lord is waiting, outstretched arms, waiting, waiting, waiting for you. Help, Lord. If we are not feeding daily on scriptures, praying, listening to biblical based sermons as often as we can, attending church services, and then living out what God teaches us from His Word will never produce an abundant of harvest of fruits. Will never. One pastor writes, preaching is one of God's chief means of sowing seed and helping fruit grow. It is a way of watering and fertilizing the crop. But you must break up the hard lumps that have formed in your soul over the week to prepare the good soil to receive the good seed. Let's prepare our hearts for the good seed. You know, I don't sit at the front, as you all know. My wife and I, we don't sit at the front because everyone has their place in life. And these people sit at the front to pray for the pastor that's up here. When I first started here, I said, Apostle, I don't want to sit at the front. I'd like to sit uh, anywhere around. Why? Why? Why would I do that? Because when I got saved, I became a deacon back home and so forth, I didn't sit with the rest of people. I sit in the crowd amongst them because the people at the front are pushing the pastor because they're there praying. I sit in the congregation, my wife and I, we sit in the congregation because we know that there are people there who are in pain. When the pastor up here hits them, they're crying. And we come beside them, and we talk with them, we pray with them, we bring them up front, and so on. Strategically, that's how it works for us. Okay? We are not less of a pastor in Cross Point. We are not less of a pastor. Pastor Jenny, you know what? I'll go around. I'll see this person, I'll say, hey, Here's a scripture for you. Here's a scripture for you. When you finish reading it and understanding it, you can come back to me or my wife and then we can discuss it because I want to see fruitfulness. I want them to reach that fourth soil. One sister said to me, what are you giving this thing to me for? I said, oh, excuse me. Another one said, is this from God? <laughs> I don't know if she's calling me God, but I, I gave it to her. Another one said, I'm busy. Okay. Others will correspond with me, and then when I try to go on one, another level, they shut me out. But one said to me, that one that I said that, is that from God? She came back to me and said, you know what? My family and I read this thing and we're going over it. I said, that's good. Now I want you to teach someone about this. It's not for me. It's for the growth of the church. And if I should come by you and say, hey, listen, read this thing. It's not for me. Practically, no, no, all of you, maybe the majority of you don't know that we exist in this church because we sit at the back. But that's us. That's us. Because we've got to have someone else there to bring them to Pastor JB and Pastor Jenny. 
I am talking about fruitfulness. Amen. If you don't want the scripture, fine. But I'm still going to pray for you right. so you can get the scripture in. I am talking about the soil. The soil that will generate not one fruit, not two, but many fruits. I'm talking about your life. Your life. Because I want to see. Do you think apostle comes here just because he feels like coming here and talking to you? He wants to see fruitfulness in your lives. He wants to know that when he steps over the other side, you're there also. Because there's fruitfulness. There's a growth in your life. Every pastor that's here, every leader, every person inside here must seek fruitfulness. Amen. Don't mess around with God. Don't mess around with fruitfulness, with growth. Help. I need to change my soil. In concluding, this parable describes four soils. They represent all of those who heard the word of God. The first soil immediately rejected it. The second soil quickly accepted it but soon fell back into old patterns of sin. The third soil grew, but the pleasures of life stunted their fruitfulness. It is only the fourth soil that bore much fruit. All of us have parts of these four soils in us at any given time. Lord, today we need to change our soil. If you fear you're not for the fourth soil, take heart. The Word of God instructs us that uh, to become the fourth soil, we have to move past the first and believe that God's Word contains instructions for life and godliness. To move past the second soil, you must get rid of the besetting sins that eat away your spiritual strength and growth. To move past the third soil, you must ex exchange physical and worldly pursuits for spiritual pursuits. Only then will you become the fertile soil able to produce much fruit. Today, we have the opportunity, I'm just gonna ask my wife to come up. We're gonna ask, today we have the opportunity to change our soil as we allow Christ, the sower, to do the work in our hearts, mind and soul. Today, just cry out to him. Take over. Worship team. Hallelujah. Jesus, help. I need to change my soil. This is a prayer for all of us this morning. We need to change our soil. Could you please stand? Stand to your feet. Think about the importance of being the good soil. Jesus walked about spreading the good news, expanding his kingdom. He was generous with the seed, very generous. That's why it felt on different places because of Jesus' generosity. We sang this morning about the love of God. How much, it is so much more than us. It's above us. It's under us. It's on our right. It's on our left. It's above us. It is so important that we don't just hear the word. We need to do something with the word. Can we promise this morning that we will not walk through those doors, get in our vehicle, and be the same? 
we need to change our soil. It cannot be the same. The same old same. It can't work. It's as if we are saying, you know what? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is called insanity. And because we want to be sane in our soul this morning, we want to cry out, Lord, help. I need to change my soil. First, I want to speak to those here with every eyes closed. I want to speak to those who are not a believer. You've never accepted Jesus in your heart. I want you to think about it. Jesus would like to switch your soil this morning. He wants to give you good soil. You've heard the word? If you're here and you're not a believer, could you raise your hands? You don't know Jesus. You don't want to go through the doors without getting the opportunity to invite him in your heart. Hallelujah. He's knocking at your heart door because you are important to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, if you need to change your soil, lift your hands up. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. Lift your hands up. Get those hands up. Lift your hands up. There is more to be done. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hand is up because I need to change my soil. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. 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 Come on. Get those hands up. Get those hands up, please. It's important. None of us are where Jesus wants us to be. Get those hands up. The only persons whose hands are not supposed to be up are the musicians. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we need you. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt you. Begin to call out his name. Tell him you need him to change your soil. Tell him you have actually switched the good soil for the whole soil, for the thorny soil, for the soil on the path because of certain decisions that you have made. Tell him today that you want him to change your soil. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
glory to your name Jesus Hallelujah. we exalt your name Jesus we glorify your name God we lift you up oh God hallelujah 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 Jesus we repent before you this morning God hallelujah hallelujah Jesus 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 because all of our unrighteousness is as filthy rats we come before you Jesus because your word is quick sharp powerful than any two-head sword dividing of bone and marrow it reaches the intent of our heart this morning so therefore God we repent before you we cry out to you this morning to change our soil there is no way Jesus that we can continue to do the same old same old not anymore not anymore not for what you have done for us not for the sacrifices that you have made for us on the cross we cannot continue to live wishy-washy Jesus 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 you've called us to be good soil growing and maturing hallelujah to be you want us to be fruitful Jesus so we cry out to you this morning Spirit of the Living God Spirit of the Living God fall afresh fall afresh on your people fall afresh on your people hallelujah hallelujah glory to your name Jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Jesus Jesus oh hallelujah 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 change our soil this morning Jesus purify us Lord purify us Jesus purify us Jesus hallelujah hallelujah let your fire fall in the sky Jesus 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 hallelujah 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 Jesus let God let our life be the same but let us be an example Lord hallelujah hallelujah Jesus in word in thought in deed hallelujah hallelujah have you wake up have you wake Jesus have you wake up hallelujah hallelujah this morning to take God seriously take God seriously everything that he has done for us is serious business take God seriously he loves us yet at the same time we need to take him seriously we cannot throw his love away we cannot trample on his love hallelujah God bless you God go with you hallelujah Hope to see you Wednesday night.